All right, here we go. We got some raging bolt action. Dude, the whole squad is prized on both sides, bro. Literally, both both sides prize the whole squad. Now, the ancient deck does play multiple copies of probably all of these Pokemon, so it's a little bit less uh, bad. You'll appreciate the 34 months there, Mershon. And I think the... I believe the Charizard player did win Rock, Paper, Scissors, but I'm not sure if they chose first or second. Um... But I, I don't think I don't see the slip on the table that shows that indicates. Does it indicate who goes first or who goes second? The little like red paper. Does that indicate who went first or who went second? We don't know where the jellyfish is. No, but I said like a brain fart. Oh, so Charizard chose first here. They actually play rock paper scissors. They do play rock paper scissors to decide who goes first. Heavy ball, yeah. Heavy ball was also prized with all the Pokemon. Fleet footed off the rip. Ultra Ball Away Manaphy and the Radiant Charizard. And I believe they're going to go... I mean, we need a Charmander here. We need to get a Mander. I don't know if they're playing Bib. We don't know if they're playing Bib or Pidgey, though. So we'll see. No issues first with Zard now. Poffin over VIP means it doesn't matter if you do nothing in turn one. I mean, it depends on the matchup, though, right, Jake? Because if you're playing against a deck that can attack turn one, you'd probably rather have an established board than not. I could still see Charizard it being correct to choose to go second with Charizard, to be honest, just for the increased odds of finding Poff in turn one. Um, obviously, like, you can recover from a worse start more easily because of Poff in, but... Yeah. Countercatcher and Bolt, this list is whack. Bro, chill, Jesse. You're going to be playing this list soon once you see how broken it is. Is it Lone Mander Pass? All right, Mander Pidge Pass. That's still not great. All right, turn one attack here. From the Raging Bolt, is it on the way? Second Raging Bolt, the Trekking Shoes. The Pokey Gear, they got rid of it. Maybe they have a Sada in hand already. They got a Sada in there, I saw a Sada. Sada and a lot of energy. The question is, do you even attack or do you wait? Maybe you just wait to power more, power more energy. Oh, perfect, this hand sucks. Yeah, you'd love to see it, to be honest. What was the first card, the first attack does what? Discard your hand, draw six? Sheesh, discarding two Sada out of hand. Oh, is it one Sada? It was one Sada, right? Okay, not bad, not bad. Saved, 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 saved. Also, it's going to be hard for the Charizard player. Uh, I guess you can hit with Entei. You don't really want to hit with Entei, though, I guess. Immediately into the Fleet Footed. Yeah, you can already tell how much cleaner these two players are playing. Like I was saying, like the early rounds, like it doesn't matter what tournament you go to, the early rounds, you know, people are fumbling, missequencing, like there's a bunch of like shenanigans going on but you can see like the Charizard players playing like pretty fast pretty clean like it's the same no matter where you go it's going to be the same thing why do they only have 25 minutes best of 125 minutes that's the that's the format forest and candy there's the forest and immediately using it is are we going to see the candy pitch out candy zard or is it going to be candy zard swing getting this first punch in here seems pretty good here for the zard player they also need to recover the Radiant Charizard at some point. Um, do, do we got the whole freaking banana? Or they could also take a turn off and chill. Taking a turn off and I don't hate not, like not attacking this turn if they could. If they as long as they have the Pidgeot set up and they can follow up with a knockout on the next turn um, and respond to this, then I think they'll be in a fine spot. Wait, doesn't the Raging Bolt deck just run out of energy and play in this matchup to take big one hit KOs? Or am I trolling? D doesn't it, though? I don't think they've checked their candies in Melon. Yeah, they could be in for a rude awakening here. Wait, was were the candies... But the candies were the first two prize cards, right? No, the shocks provide. Oh, that's true. You have Sandy shocks to make up for it. That's true. <laughs> the shocks provide. <laughs> oh, the shocks provide. That's funny. Have no fear. The shocks will provide. Wait, it's B Barrel and Pidgey, bruh. Who was in chat earlier hyping that up? Someone was in chat earlier hyping up the the B Barrel Pidgeot build. All right, so no candies are just going for the setup play. I don't hate this. Over to the Sandy Shocks player. They got to make a move this turn. You got to make a move this turn. We can't be sitting here doing nothing for too long. They kept off the trekking shoes. So I see a Nest Ball and a Poke Gear in hand. So I'm talking, uh, I'm talking Greninja. Okay, gear into the Sada. Take a knockout. They do play. I saw it in there. They play the maximum bout. They want that help in the Charizard matchup.
Dude, Pidgeot plus Bib is so good, you always have everything. What happens if you prize? I feel like you'd have to play Heavy Ball in that build, though. So you can minimize the effect that your prizes have. I feel like you'd have to play it, but... 1-1 one, one Pidge, 1-1 one, one Bib. Are we playing 2-2 two, two Bib with a 1-1 one, one Pidge? That sounds sketch. We never have enough bench space to set up. Well, actually, to be honest, we could have enough bench space for 2-2 two, two B-Barrel and a Pidgeot at some point, so... Maybe that is the move, to be honest. And honestly, with the Poffins giving you more setup past your turn one, I could see it. All right, so we got Greninja off Nest Ball, but we don't actually have an energy to use it to Greninja. So we're going in with the Poke Gear here and hoping for that Sada. But we did just discard a Sada earlier. So we don't have four Sada in the deck here. It's just three. Three, or there might have been one prize. I already forget the prize cards, to be honest. And hey, there's Sada. Plenty of energy in the discard pile as well. Plenty of energy in the discard pile. The turn one, the turn one attack set that up for us pretty nicely. They're actually shuffling. Yeah, like I said, as like the tournament progresses, the players like they they play cleaner, they shuffle better. Like it's just like the the, the earlier rounds, you're probably gonna play against less experienced players, so or you're going to see less experienced players, which is what we saw. But now we're at the three O tables. Now now they know what they're doing. The KO on the ante is already available now, right? Isn't it eighty times? Um, I actually don't remember how much damage does the thing do. Is it? It's eighty times, right? And then is choosing to set up the Coridon here 70 times? Oh. So we have to discard four energy to KO this thing? Dude, pack it up, bro. This deck sucks, bro. This deck, pack it up. No shot. 70? Four? Jeez. Four? What did they just use there? Ultra Ball? Okay. What are they looking for here? What's uh, maybe a Sandy Shocks? They might not know what they're looking for here. Honestly, in this matchup as well as Charizard, can't you just like chase the Sandy Shocks and just win that way? Sounds pretty good to me. Looks like another Raging Bolt there. That's why Guardy Raging Bolt is so good. True. Honestly, maybe the only way to play the deck is Guardy Raging Bolt. Another capsule to the bolts. What else we got? What was that Pokemon? I couldn't tell for sure. I think it was another Raging Bolt, though. Is it even worth attacking? Anyway, is it just 70 flat, or is it plus? Why would you even attack there? I guess they could boss KO the energy off the bench, so you kind of protect the energy, I guess, a little bit. Eh, I guess that's fine. Yeah, because I guess that thing could get bossed, and you would lose one energy in play. Yeah, seems reasonable. Seems reasonable. I don't hate it. Candy Zard boss. All right, I assume we're going to see an attack here finally from our Charizard player. Can't imagine we're trying to wait another turn to attack and let the uh, the Raging Bolt player set up that much more. So, And it looks like they are lining up an Arvin here for the Defiance Vest, or Defiance Band, excuse me, and an Ultra Ball. So Sandy Shocks is like Naganadel from Lost Thunder. Uh, yeah, but you have to be behind. No, your your opponent has to be at four or less prize cards. You don't have to be behind on prize cards. Yeah, your opponent has to be at four or less prize cards. But if they're there, we're getting that energy. Okay, there we go. There's the Arvin. I said, yep, there's the Defiance Band and the Ultra Ball. And then, like I said, we're probably, I assume we're going back in for Candy Zard. Oh, they actually have Zard in hand. So they better have Candy Zard here. I, th I think they're going to go get the B-Barrel here then instead. I'm giving it some thought, though. Yeah, we know that they have some pretty bad prize cards. They have two Candy Prize and a Charmeleon Prize. And they probably only run... I mean, they can only run four Candy. But they probably only play one Charmeleon. So, getting to the next Charizard could be tough. It looks like... Are they thinking about Ultra Blind away at Charizard? Super Rod versus Iono looks like the... the or you can get rid of the Defiance Band as well, to be honest. I don't, they, getting rid of that seems fine. They had an Energy in hand, so they chose to keep the Energy. I don't think they have a Candy in hand, though. I don't think they're attacking this turn. Which I guess is fine, to be honest. Like, if, if the... Was it Raging Bolt player gets the first two prize cards, then um, you can just respond with Vacuum plus knock out the Raging Bolt, which seems fine. 
Um, but it gives a lot of time for the Raging Bolt player to build up energy. That's what I'm kind of scared of here for the uh, for the Charizard player, is that the, the Raging Bolt player gets to build up a lot of energy here. Is there any basic Pokemon that can accelerate energy from the discard pile right now? Like, is there like a Moltres V in the format? No, right? Oh, wait, did they even use Fleet Footed? Did they forget to use Fleet Footed there? You definitely want the... Um, Illy? No, like as an ability. Like, is there a Moltres V type Pokemon? They did forget the Fleet Footed. Oh, they want to do it after the B-Barrel. But I feel like they should have done it before the Arvin. That was definitely a missequence there. They should have Fleet Footed before the Arvin, right? Unless they're really content, unless they're truly content, which it is possible, the Zard player might be just waiting to get KO'd here. They might actually be truly content with just getting KO'd here, to be honest. Sandy Shocks? No, but like before, before your opponent draws prize cards. Like literally just like a Moltres V. Magma Base and Armor Rouge? Well, no, not, we don't need to move the energy around. So Magma Basin would be something. I'm just trying to see if we can accelerate more energy into play before we have to wait for Sandy Shocks to kick in. But there might not be. Like, literally a Moltres. Do we have literally a Moltres? Lunatone Soul Rock? Yo, wait, what about Lunatone Soul Rock Raging Bolt? Is that not better? That could be better. All right. I feel like we got to go here. We would like to play another Sada here, though, for sure, to keep, it, keep as much energy in play as possible. There's a Poke Gear. Does it find a Sada? That's what they want. There's only two Sada gone. I don't think there's any Sada prize, but... That's a Sada. That's a Sada. We just want to chain Sada here. That's the plan. Chain the Sada. They have the Palpad in hand as well, actually. Do they play... Should they play the Palpad first? I'm not sure. I, I think... I feel almost like they should play the Palpad first, because drawing into a Sada here seems pretty good. Saving the Palpat does play around Iono better. So I guess that'd be kind of the question. Do you want to play around Iono or do you want another Sada in your hand? They go for the play around Iono play, which I don't know, might be correct. I'm actually not really sure. Actually, that probably is the correct play. The hand is kind of huge. They're still building this hand up. Yeah, here comes the Palpat. The Sadas are back. And then what, they have to discard, what, three energy here to get the knockout? And they probably want to split them up a little bit. Maybe you get rid of two off the active. You could get rid of two off the active and then one off the bench and then leave the one on the bench uh, Raging Bolt because you want to preserve as many energy in play as possible to have to respond to this Charizard. Ooh, could they get the knockout with the Koride on here, actually? They can do 90, 90, 70, not quite. Okay, never mind. Well, actually, if they bench... Wait, do they have a Great Tusk in their hand? The Ancient Great Tusk thing? No shot, but maybe. It looked like it was in the hand. It might be another Raging Bolt. It's probably another Raging Bolt. Okay, sure. Two off the active, one off the bench. Two off the bench? What? <gasps> They're going to get bodied. Maybe they don't play Vacuum. Are they, are they, what? Are they, are they hoping for the no vacuum read? Bro, they get devastated by a vacuum here. This can't be the correct line, for sure. Yeah, this can't be the correct line here. Vacuum goes too hard. But do they have the vacuum? They're using Arvin here and getting a rare candy. Honestly, I don't even know how I feel about, oh, they search out just the rare candy. They lined up the Arvin, so I was like a little bit curious about that. They're using quick search before B-Barrel though. It does thin out the deck of the energy, but I feel like you'd, Rather draw with B Barrel first to see if you can find an out. But maybe they're gonna play the Iono. Actually, their hand might not have enough cards to be able to, they might not be able to draw with the B Barrel, to be honest. They got a lot of cards in that hand. Once again, they're thinking about that super rod to recover. You do want to recover Radzard at some point. But the Super Rod would only recover a Radzard here. There's no energy in the discard pile or anything. I think it's better to leave the bolt uh alive this turn and then vacuum next turn, unless you're worried about cart. But isn't that like this? So if you KO the Bolt this turn, then they could go like double Sandy Shocks, recover two energy. But if you KO the Raging Bolt, you remove two energy from play. And then they don't, they guaranteed have two less energy. But otherwise they have to, they have to find two Sandy Shocks and bench two Sandy Shocks to actually make up for the energy, right? I feel like just vacuuming this turn makes more sense. Because like, yeah, don't let your opponent utilize those energy. 
Although, how many energy do you have to discard to KO a freaking Charizard? You have to KO what? Or get rid of what? Five? Yeah, so then they could go uh, Sada Attach. But now they would need Sada Attach Double Lightning Dude. I feel like KOing this one makes a little bit more sense. Or maybe you let him K... No, no, no. I feel like KOing this one makes sense. Yeah. An... Oh, it is a 2-2 B-Barrel plus a 1-1 Pidgeot. They use a Nest Ball here, but Charmanders are all prized. Another Nest Ball. This is also going to be a fail because there's two Charmander's prize. And now they'll know for sure, but they go for the Raids art, Radi Radiance Art anyway, so that's still good. Max Belt in hand. They have Max Belt in hand, but they have nothing else in their hand. All right, throws the cards at the opponent. Bold strategy. And they will get the knockout. Oh, no, no, no. We don't know if they have the vacuum. They probably don't have the vacuum, to be honest. They probably aren't going to get the KO here. They have Countercatcher in hand, but it's not really worth... Well, you could Countercatcher KO the Greninja, to be honest. Actually, I don't hate that. Because punching the active doesn't feel great if you have a vacuum on a later turn. I think actually KOing the Greninja here probably makes more sense. There we go. Here comes Charizard. Yeah, punching the active feels kind of weak here. But if you have vacuum for next turn, I guess you do punch the active. It just depends on if you play vacuum or not, to be honest, I guess. If you have vacuum, you can punch the active vacuum next turn. Oh, they're going for like a stall strategy here. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Trying to trap it in the active. Yeah, I guess it's okay. I think you still have the vac basically the same vacuum play. Yeah, you basically still have the same vacuum play here. You vacuum the active. Here comes a Greninja. I don't hate KO and Greninja here, though, and removing the draw power from play as well, to be honest, but this seems fine. Let's see what they can put together. They do have the switch card in hand, but now they need to find... There's a Sada. And they have the switch card, so they just need one more energy here, and they can knock out the active. There's the energy. There's an Ultra Ball. Get the Sandy Shocks online. I think you got to get a Sandy Shocks here. They had the Heavy Ball as well, but it went back to the bottom of the deck, so they don't have, like, double Sandy Shocks. Well, they have Nest Ball in hand as well. Definitely need to find a Sandy Shocks here for sure. And you also want to heal the active one so it can't just get uh it can't just get vacuum KO'd. We gotta be playing the Nest Ball here, right? Is that a max belt? That is a max belt, yeah. And I also feel like because of the max belt, we should probably bench another. Yeah, because of the max belt, I feel like we should bench another um. Okay, that's the same. Oh, wait, we can't use Sandy Shocks this turn yet. Never mind. Never mind. We can't use it. We should still probably set it up, but we can't use it. We can't use it. What is the draw power from, uh, for the deck on the dude on the right? Greninja. Down store as well. Go ahead and uses it. Seems fine. Plays four Seal Sun, but what V Pokemon do they play? Is it just a Luminion? They also play Vitality Band. Sandy showing up to work early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the other Raging Bolt should come down. You don't have to attach the Max Belt or Maximum Belt. No, heal your active. Heal your active. Heal your active. No, that's such a throw. I don't know if they play the Vacuum, though. We, I haven't seen the Vacuum in the Charizard player's deck. But they had the Switch card in hand to heal the active here. So now they can go Counter Catcher. Counter Catcher, what? Sandy Shocks plus Vacuum that one. Oh, you can counter catch the other Raging Bolt, actually. You can go counter catch a Raging Bolt, Iono, Vacuum. That's four prize cards. And you just win with a boss next turn. I guess you can counter catch the Sandy Shocks and KO with Radiant Charizard this turn if you don't want to put a two prize on your active. I don't know if. Oh, there's the Vacuum. I saw it. There it is in the front of the deck. Doing a quick count. Yeah, I saw the Vacuum. The Vacuum is there. Going for the rock sand, it looks like, off the quick search. So they're not guaranteed the vacuum. I think they have the counter... No, they used the counter catcher last turn, so they might be out of counter catcher, actually. They Actually, the, the counter catcher they used last turn, right, to bring up the other Raging Bolt, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I think they could have just punch the active there. I think it was fine to just punch the active, save the counter catcher. And this is where the counter catcher would have been really good, to be honest. Oh, I don't like the sequencing either. Now they're playing the Ultra Ball, but it looks like they could have thinned out the hand first, and then, yeah, this is like some bad sequencing here, to be honest. It looks like they definitely could have thinned out the hand first, drawn, drawn with B-Barrel, before using Roxanne. What's draw three first? 
Oh, this is such a bad sequence here. They could have drawn so many cards before using Quick Search. And then use... Who knows if we'll be able to even draw any cards off this after this rocks in. We could have drawn three right there. It was like two or three. Now we might draw zero from B-Barrels this turn. Yeah, this is some trolling here. This is a bad sequencing from the Zard player. Oh, they play the Cape. What the heck? The Cape... No, they're they're on a whole different level right here. They also could have shuffled Fire Energy back into the deck to increase the odds of finding a Fire Energy for the Radiant Charizard, but they instead they shuffled the other cards back to the deck. I don't know what the other cards were, but... Time is definitely a concern here. There's only four minutes left. There's a Nest Ball fail. Yeah, the Charizard player is definitely pretty poor sequencing. They're not maximizing how many cards they can see this turn. And no Prime Catcher instead with the Cape. Honestly, in this matchup, though, the Cape's decent, for sure. Sheesh. B-Barrel for one and Prey. But they kind of did this to themselves here. Oh, they have no candy left, though, right? Don't they have no candy? They need to rip Vacuum there to rip a candy off the prize cards. That's right, they don't have any candy. And they didn't use the Super Rock to shuffle Fire Energy back into the deck, so they can't even attack with the Radiant Charizard. Because they ultra balled away the Super Auto uh, away before using Roxanne, but they could have played the Super Auto, recovered Fire Energy to have an out for the Radiant Charizard. To at least do some kind of attack here. They definitely want to play for the Vacuum play, though. Luminion? We just played a supporter. Wait, it's four Seal Stone in the hand? They might have four Seal Stone in the hand. If they don't have four Seal Stone in the hand, they are trolling. They better have four Seal Stone here. Oh, they just played it so they can draw more with B-Barrel. Okay, they're not trolling. They're drawing more with B- One more with B-Barrel. Play the Luminion on the bench to B-Barrel for one. Is it worth it? Oh, they got the Vacuum! Bro, they got it off the one! Now they have to figure out what the Lost Zone. I, it was worth it. It was worth it. It was definitely the correct play there, too. I thought they were trolling, but they still had another B-Barrel left. Now they get a Rare Candy off the prize cards as well. But hang on. They're the prize cards. They got the two rare candies. Don't send up that. No, don't send that up. Don't. Why would you send up that? You could have sent up a one prizer. They always town store for the forest, right? I don't think they even play forest, to be honest. Dude, not the raging bolt. That's our win condition. Send up the, the Karina. <laughs> no. No, bro. What are they doing? Bro is selling. Bro. All right, so, so you got to Nest Ball, Ultra Ball. Town Store first. What can they even get here? They use their V-Star turn two. Oh, what'd they use it on? They did use their, their V-Star is flipped. What V Pokemon? Oh, they had Entei. They used Entei with four seal stone. That's true. Yeah, yeah. They used Entei with four seal stone. True, 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 true. So four seal stone wasn't an option. Putting Luminion down was correct to draw the one card. Like even though your chances are low of getting vacuum, you have to play for it. They play for it. They get the vacuum. Uh, vacuum play happens. Now, the, the Raging Bolt player definitely should not have sent up Raging Bolt there. That was trolling. Uh, <laughs> that was definitely trolling. I don't know if they're completely dead in the water. They do have a Luminion there. It would have been so much better if they had sent up a one prizer though. Because then they could have Luminion to the Raging Bolt and force the... They start to build up energy and play to have a chance to win this. But now it seems like they're just going to lose. If the Charizard player had three prize cards left here, it would make a huge difference. Make a huge, huge difference. I also think it's possible the Charizard player didn't realize that they had uh <laughs> that they had the two candy prized. There's for three. There's a heavy ball that gets another sandy shock that accelerates another energy into play. Alright. That's something. We're building up towards something here. There's no raging bolt in play though. Yo, appreciate the tier one sub there, Sergio. Welcome to the rat pack. We're all out of milk, but we got plenty of throws. And I think the Zard player's been playing really fast this whole set. I think the Zard player is still playing fast, you know, with the idea of trying to complete, make this set count and complete this set. So, um, that might be, do, that might be part of their, um, part of their, uh, their rushed, the overall their rushed, uh, rushed plays.
There's the pass. Here's the draw. There's the boss. <laughs> Dude, no, even in this one, the Charizard player is just like, boom, you're done. Get him out of here. Let's go.